Sweden is fed up with cash. It's a hassle to carry around, it can easily be stolen or misplaced, and frankly, no one is using it anymore. 10 years ago, just about 40% of their population was paying with cash, and now, only 6%. So what's their answer? To go completely cashless by March of 2023. They're even planning a crypto called the e-kroner for use starting this year. Folks, this is happening, and it's happening fast. Time to learn about Sweden's cashless plans and discuss if this could become a worldwide trend. At first glance, it may seem like Sweden is out of its mind. After all, in the United States, people are still using cash pretty gosh darn frequently. One study from the Pew Research Center found that 70% of Americans still use cash for their purchases on a weekly basis. But hop across the Atlantic to the Nordic North and you'll find a much different story. Sweden's usage of cash has dropped to a record low and it continues to drop each year, all the way down to just 6%. Cards are being used for 58% of all payments according to the Swedish Central Bank, and they also have revealed that 80% of the population currently carry plastic. The widespread use of cards over cash has even led to the majority of Swedish banks to stop letting customers withdraw or deposit cash at all. Branches have been steadily closing, and if for some reason a customer does need cash, their only choice is to head over to an ATM. The tables have been turning this way for quite some time. Back in 2012, the six largest banks in Sweden saw the trend coming and built Swish, an instantaneous mobile payment platform created for easy electronic payments. And everyone was on board. The people, governments, and banks, they all loved it. And this convenient little app has become the standard for mobile payments over half of the population currently uses it. Now, with all this change to digital, one of your first thoughts may be, hey, how in the heck do kids use money? How do they buy ice cream or a new bicycle? How do they run down to the candy store for a lollipop? Check this out. Swedish banks issue debit cards to children starting at age seven. Currently, when you take into account the nation receiving debit cards, once you're age seven and up, that means 97% of the population has a debit card. It's already been theorized that cash and coins will be put on display in museums so that children growing up will at least know what in the heck Puff Daddy is talking about when he says it's all about the Benjamins, baby. Truly, money in its physical form is looking to be a thing of the past, and this reality is going to be here sooner than you could ever think. So what are the pros and cons of moving a society in this direction? Surely there must be many benefits, but clearly there's some pretty obvious disadvantages. What's the scoop here? The pros look a little something like this. Bank robberies will go to zero. Makes sense, right? There won't be anything to steal. Counterfeiting money will be non-existent as well, and drug and weapons markets will be greatly reduced. In the United States, illegal drugs are a $320 billion industry, and illegal weapons are estimated to be a $1 billion industry as well. Imagine being able to shrink those markets. Honestly? Maybe the US should take some notes from Sweden. There will also be way less tax avoidance in a society with an entirely digital currency. And get this, there will be way less petty crime too. No more pickpockets, cause there's no money in people's pockets. And certainly small business owners will feel more safe as well, as there won't be any cash in their cash registers. In fact, don't take our word for it. Here's a quote from Christopher Lube, a general manager of a restaurant and ecological food company in Stockholm that just so happened to stop accepting cash a year ago. He said, it's good for both the guests and for us. It saved us a lot of time in that we don't have to count cash anymore. There's hardly been any reaction. Almost everybody has the alternative payment method, a credit card. But there certainly are some downsides to this move as well. And we got them for you right here. Cons to a cashless society include the struggle that many retirees, people with disabilities, and newly arrived refugees will face. These demographics aren't always as familiar with new technology, and imagine being new to the country and not being able to access a digital wallet. You'd be out of luck with even the most mundane purchases which includes using the toilet. Oh yes, this is a real thing. Using a public toilet in Sweden can cost as much as 10 kroner. That's about one US dollar. And if you can't pay for it, you ain't using it. There are also concerns of the lack of freedom of choice with this move to digital currencies. Some citizens simply depend on cash. And if it's gone, well, it seems like they'll just be out of luck. 
The speed at which this change is happening might simply be too much for some folks. After all, March of 2023, the reported date for when Sweden will do away with their dollars, is just under two years away at the time of writing this. Yikes. But we don't mean to be all doom and gloom. In fact, the advantages of a society with a totally digital currency are rather attractive. And if you need any proof that things are kind of moving this way, whether you want them to or not, just take a look at the cryptocurrency market. Oh, that's right, we're talking about crypto now. And how could we not? Briefly, in May of 2021, the market cap for Bitcoin touched $1 trillion. In April, the entire market cap for the space was at $2 trillion. Yes, it's dropped a bit since then, but hey, crypto is volatile. Though, experts say that as adoption continues to occur over the years, the volatility will slowly fade and these coins will be stable. Sweden has definitely taken note of the crypto space. They have announced they will be releasing their own cryptocurrency, the e-kroner, this year. It's been in the works since 2017, and unlike cryptos like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Cardano, it will be centralized, meaning that it is under control of the government. The Riksbank would issue the currency, and while currently its usage is still limited, it's still in a sort of test phase, and it's only a matter of time until it's available to Swedish citizens. The idea, as you can imagine, is quite simple. One e-kroner would be worth one kroner in a private bank account. Very simple, right? So why doesn't the US jump on this trend? Are we just gonna let Sweden beat us to the punch when it comes to switching to crypto? Well, we're glad you asked because the final thought we wanna leave you with is, the US is planning a government-backed cryptocurrency. But here's some stats you should know before we talk a US-backed crypto. The majority of the money in the US is already digital. Oh, you heard that right. Digital dollars are essentially already here. Listen to this. In February of 2020, there was $1.75 trillion in cash circulating in the United States, but there was $15.434 trillion in savings and checking accounts in December of 2019. That means digital is here. 90% of all US dollars have no physical existence. Heck, we'll take it one step further. Worldwide, only 8% of money is physical. So what is the US doing to take advantage of this clear trend? Just last month, the Federal Reserve stated that they will be developing its own crypto and that research will start this summer. Chairman Jerome Powell stated, the effective functioning of our economy requires that people have faith and confidence in not only the dollar, but also in the payment networks, banks, and other payment service providers that allow money to flow on a daily basis. Our focus is on ensuring a safe and efficient payment system that provides broad benefits to American households and businesses, while also embracing innovation. So when will we see the Lincoln coin or whatever it will be called? You're gonna have to wait a bit. Experts say it's gonna be another four or five years until it's here, but it is coming. We'll see you next time, right here on the richest.